Welcome to the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast. I'm Oisín Langan. Shamrock Rovers were the winners even in one of the games they weren't playing in last night as not only did they beat Dundalk with Bowes and Derry Drew at Daly Mount Park. St. Pat's did what they were expected to do beating UCD 1-0 at the bowl. Redmond with the only goal of the game there. Uh, but UCD did put it up to them and had some chances late on. The result means that the Saints are four points behind the hoops while Derry are third, seven behind the leaders, but they have a game in hand. Bowes are also seven points behind Shamrock Rovers, having played the same number of games, and they go to Tala next week. We'll hear from former Derry City and Bowes midfielder Gareth McGlynn, who watched the Candy Stripes draw with Bohemians, while from Tala, goal scorer Pico Lopez talks to us about what is a very, very big win. At the bottom, it was a disastrous night for Cork City, who lost 3-1 away to Drogheda, meaning their second from bottom, six points behind Sligo Rovers, who play their, their game in hand, Tonight, as we speak, against Shells. The Drogs are now eight points clear of the playoff spot and they're looking quite good. Let's start at Daly Mount Park where Bulls drew with Derry City, a game that started late due to a power failure. It turned out to be worth the wait though. And afterwards, Gareth McGlynn sent us this voice note. Thanks, Oshin. The final score here is Bohemians 2, Derry City 2. And what an incredibly entertaining game we had here at Daily Mount tonight. Of course, Derry City coming off the back of getting knocked out of the Europa Conference League as well as the FAA Cup on penalties. Rory Higgins started tonight by making five changes. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to get the victory. Uh, the real winners tonight looks like Shamrock Rovers, of course, beating Dundalk 1-0 earlier on the night uh, I say earlier on in the night it's because we had a 45 minute delay due to floodlit problems here at Daily Mount now when we did get started it was Bose who were straight at Derry City they were incredibly quick out of the blocks and it was a home side they really should have opened the scoring after two minutes it was a recycled cross from a corner that found Jordan Flores he was on marked at the back post and his header back across goal it fell perfectly to of Labby, who just got it all wrong. I think he tried to place it into the corner. It came off his foot and was cleared by Derry. But again, both kept at it and they got the reward um, for such a bright start when they took the lead on the 13 minutes. It was Paddy Kirk's through ball and it looked as if he just split the Derry defence and the onrushing James Clark held off Mark Conley to race through and place the ball past Brian Maher to make it 1-0 to Bose. Derry City then lost the influential Mark Conley to injury. He was replaced by Shane McElhinney. And in fairness to Derry, City's response, it, it, it was a horrible period for them, but they really did bounce back well. They levelled the game, and it was their first real attack. It was Will Patching's nutmeg that set away Michael Duffy. And after an exchange of passes to Paul McMullen, he got the ball back to Duffy, who smashed the ball past Talbot at his near post. That's actually Duffy's eighth goal of the season. City then, it, they really had the momentum. They should have taken the lead again the half hour. It was a great reverse pass by Patchy and it put Danny Mullen away and he was in on goal. It was at, at the angle. His left foot shot went past Tolbert and then just past the post. Bose then went down the other the other end and it was really was end to end. Offal Abbey set Conley up. Bose then went down the other end. The game really was opening up at this stage. Conley went down the right, crossed it in to Abbey, and his flash shot went just wide. Derry City then turned the game on its head completely by taking the lead just a few minutes before half time. Kieran Call shaped a pass, but instead sent a brilliant cross into the middle where Danny Mullen rose higher than anybody else and sent a looping header over. Talbot's head and into the corner of the net. It was a really, really good finish. And that was his first goal for the club. It was Derry then gifted Bowes an equaliser. It was a clever pass by Clark initially to send Adam McDonnell away down the right-hand side. But then out of nowhere, Sato Diallo came across the pitch. He went to dive in. In fairness to Adam McDonnell, he saw him coming, put it in front of him, went down and it was a penalty. And listen, Oval Albi didn't need didn't need a, a second chance from the spot kick putting it away. He really is on on, on form at the minute. Again, Derry City response was impressive. Um, they hit back a bow strongly. McMullen on the right and Duffy on the left were causing real problems, particularly McMullen. He got a great ball on the Danny Mullen, who then went close to scoring his second goal with a glance on header. But in fairness, they tall, but he pushed it just over. Then came an even closer. 
chance just two minutes later when Ben Doherty sent an incredible effort into the underside of the crossbar. It was a well-worked corner, obviously off the training ground from, from Derry. Found Ben Doherty at the edge of the box. He went to shape with his right, took it on to his left, cracked, and in fairness, on the replay, it just it, it shows you Talbot actually gets his fingers and saves it. What a save. Unbelievable. Um, unfortunately, it looks like Shamrock Rovers are the winners. Again, they got their victory at home to Dundalk. And unfortunately here, for both Bowes and Derry, neither of them got the victory that they needed. And it finished 2-2. This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast. And what you're listening to is the Dundalk fans at the final whistle of their 1-0 defeat in Tallis Stadium against Shamrock Rovers, obviously. Pico Lopez with the only goal of the game from a 63rd minute header. The Lily Whites had their chances in the first half but they didn't take them and they were punished. They had a couple of uh, half chances in the second half as well. More analysis and chat about this game to come with Aoife Mullen of ExtraTime.com who is in Tala Stadium. But first, after the game, goal scorer Pico Lopez chatted with Andrew Dempsey. Uh, Pico, just, um, I know probably that a lot's been made of your recent form, but I think that's was a five from league wins in a row. And it's obviously playing games in here. How important is that, especially going into the run? It's huge. Like, Tal is a, is a fortress and always has been for us. Like, and we get great home support here as well. And it, it, it's always going to be rocking them come the business end of the season. And, and we need the fans again today. They were great. Well, the the schoolboy and schoolgirl clubs that are today really sort of added to the atmosphere. And uh, look, they're, they're going to be massive um, for, the, for the run in the next few games. And they know that. Like, um, and that's what we need to put drivers on. Do you find that maybe gives you an edge? Because I think maybe during the first half, it will be 10 minutes in, the noise started going up, and I think you started making a few chances around then. Does that give you an edge? Definitely, yeah. They're, they're 12th man, and say they, they, they create an atmosphere for us, like, which, is, which is vital. And as far as it's intimidating for some teams, so we need to use that to our advantage. And sometimes it gives us a lift. And as you say, like, they started well, um, and they, they found fans gave us a lift, and we found our feet, and we started to create chances, started to play well, and, and maybe control the game a bit better. Yeah, and that's, I think that's what, for, I know you're probably not going to think too far ahead of you know how many points you're ahead and all this kind of stuff, but four points ahead, it, it's, it's not a bad gap to have at this stage. No, look, look, we're at the top at the table. I suppose it's 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 not bad at all. Like, but we just need to do our job. As I say, I'm not even thinking that far about gaps or where we are. It's just it's just the next game, getting three points, putting to bed, moving on to the next one. Yeah, and how important will it be to to get a big win next week against Wales? Huge, because it's the next one. It's, you know, yeah. I mean, because it's the next game. It's the next three points available. It, it's going to be massive, and as is every game um, from here on out. This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast, and that was Pico Lopez of Shamrock Rovers. Following the 1-0 win over Dundalk at Tallis Stadium last night, he was speaking to Andrew Dempsey. Aoife Mullen of ExtraTime.com, you were in the crowd, you were with the away supporters uh, last night. Dundalk had a lot of chances, or certainly some chances, in the first half. They didn't take any of them, and in the end, it cost them big time. You've just summed it up there nicely, Oshin. That was it. They had the chances, and I've been on before, I suppose most recently with the European game, and said something similar. Dundalk had the chances, the opportunities were there, but they didn't take them. Shamrock Rovers took theirs and that was huge, a, a, possibly a defining moment for them, as you've said, in their title challenge. They're going for four in a row. This felt like a big game. And then when we heard the scorelines from other grounds, we, we realised that it possibly could be a big game. You know, with eight games to go, they're now still four points ahead. And as you said, although people maybe outside of the town didn't see Dundalk as challengers or in this title race they could have last night had the potential if they'd got a win to narrow that margin between Rovers and themselves to put them into that title race and maybe push on we don't know and from the Dundalk point of view with the results that they've had over Shamrock Rovers recently and of course knocking them out of the FAI Cup Sports Direct FAI Cup they possibly were coming into this with confidence but ultimately it's now four years since Dundalk have won at Tala. Is that something that psychologically is, is affecting them? They would have liked to have put that right last night. As you've said, they had their chances, particularly in the last 15 minutes, I suppose, of the opening half and really should have been ahead. And that's going to be something that's going to be playing on their minds all weekend, particularly John Martin, who had that really close chance, you know, that header that from two yards out, um, which came off the post. And that miss, I suppose, has, has really proved costly. Yeah. Down the other end, Pico Lopez, who Andrew spoke to, took his chance and 
there we have it, 1-0. It's the narrowest of margins, but it has a huge impact on the top of the table. Sitting with the Dundalk fans last night, I get a sense they actually get it. They're not expecting anything that's unrealistic because at the end of the game on the full-time whistle, there was silence for a few seconds. Now, I said that the effects we played earlier on were at the full-time whistle. They were about 30 seconds after the full-time whistle. They started singing. They started getting behind their team. When Stephen O'Donnell came over, they applauded him. When the players came over, they applauded him. They were still banging the drum. So they get where Dundalk are and what the realistic ambition should be. And they get that if you're trying to manage Pat Hooban, you can't play him for 90 minutes. And that's something the guys on the Town End podcast, um, a really good Dundalk podcast, spoke about last night after the game. They get that when you're missing Robbie Benson. That's a huge loss. And you could actually see that last night at times in the middle of the park when they needed that bit of quality. They just didn't quite have the Benson type player. John Mountney, a huge loss. Daryl Horgan just back in for my money. The best player on the pitch last night. I thought he was the player of the match. Um, hard as Gaffney worked. So the Dundalk fans, they 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 like they want success like everyone else. Um, but they do, I think, understand why Dundalk maybe are not challenging for the league title and why 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 they are where they're why where they are. Yes, you're right there. There's a realism there. There's no doubt that the support is there. Like you've mentioned, the the away fans that the. the the away section was rocking from start to finish. The fans never stopped singing and that's just what they do. And they're there to lend support. And I think you mentioned, and it possibly doesn't come across on, on screen when because it's after the event and the analysis is happening for those who are watching on TV. But at the end, the players did come over, all of them. Stephen O'Donnell did come over and there was singing. And as you said, loud, rapturous applause, because I think and the players and the manager and the staff all mention it in in interviews about the fans and the support that they receive, even through, you know, in the peaks and the troughs. Because, as you mentioned there, Dundalk fans obviously want Dundalk to win and possibly before half time yesterday, we're looking at those chances, thinking if two of those had been converted, going in 2-0 up, the momentum would be with Dundalk, the belief would be there. They've had a good few spells of late. They've managed to get results even when they weren't performing well, for example, against Sligo. And I think that perhaps Dundalk could have got a result. But ultimately, as you've said, all things considered and when you take into account those factors that you've mentioned, players possibly coming towards the end of their career, maybe other players who are out injured at the moment and can have huge impact on games. All of that has to be taken into account. And I think Dundalk fans realise that. And even the aforementioned Town End podcast, um, there was a discussion last night about maybe one eye on the Sports Direct FAI Cup quarterfinal against Galway, you know, a tricky away tie to Galway. But that that's possibly where Dundalk fans are looking at now because you have to just look around you, look at what's in front of you and look what Stephen O'Donnell is doing. And I think there's massive respect there for Stephen O'Donnell and a belief in the fans. And even, you know, with Brian Gartland there, with Liam Burns there, the Dundalk fans trust in those key figures at the club and believe that if if they back them, that they, they will make the decisions. And I suppose looking at Stephen O'Donnell last night, perhaps there was a little bit of frustration with the timing of substitutions and had they come in earlier because we saw when Sam Durant came on, he had a good chance. You know, Manus did have to deny him that could have been an equaliser in the last 10 minutes. Um, so I suppose he's looking promising. So if Dundalk fans continue to, to back their team and put faith in, in the manager and his, his backroom team, I think they have a belief, this is a project, a longer term project that they can build on. A positive result last night would have been great. And as we've said before, there have been good results against Shamrock Rovers this season. But ultimately, there is that gulf there and the table, I suppose, the, the numbers on the table now reflect that. OK, Aoife Mullen of ExtraTime.com, thank you very much. You might accuse us, by the way, of concentrating on Dundalk rather than Shamrock Rovers. I will say that, um, you know, we just played an interview with Pico Lopez and the thing with Shamrock Rovers is they're so steady and so successful. It's nearly boring, which is a compliment to them and Stephen Bradley. Uh, you do want to talk and make mention of Shamrock Rovers because in fairness, they did win the game last night. Yes, and it's just when you said that, I realised that perhaps I did ramble a little bit too much about Dundalk. Well, I did um, ask you about Dundalk, which to be fair. But as you've said, Shamrock Rovers are sitting there at the top of the table. I mean, it wasn't extremely impressive. It wasn't the prettiest last night, but it doesn't have to be because they're winners and it's that age old cliche of eking out results. That's what champions do. That's what good sides do. They, you know, they had their moments in the first half. You know, Burke 
had two shots that went wide. Burt had a chance. Gaffney came closest and he was on target in the first half. He, of course, had the ball in the net um, early in the second half. And then that was ruled out for offside on, on Pico Lopez. Lee Grace obviously had a couple of good blocks as well to deny Dundalk in the first half. So, you know, Shamrock Rovers, although they didn't play up to their high standards, they're, they're top of the table now and that's where they want to be. And at the business end of the season, don't really matter. It's results that do matter. So, you know, we do have to give credit to them. And I think at the start of the season, when people were predicting who might win and their, you know, talk of Derry perhaps being the closest challengers, a lot of people pointed to the bench and the strength and depth that Shamrock Rovers have on the bench. And we saw that in Tala last night. We saw Johnny Kenny coming on. He could have made it 2 0 and sealed the deal. Um, we saw Richie Tell come on, obviously, and Trevor Clark come back. And Jack Byrne is yet to return, missing Neil Ferruja. So depth, I suppose, is showing. And now that we're into that last last run, the home leg of the season, that perhaps is going to be a huge factor for them. But as neutrals, and of course, you're you're a Dundalk fan, but you're also a neutral who kind of writes about the league and follows the league. And look, I, I everyone knows I'm a Cork City fan, but as someone who wants the lead, league to succeed, I think we do need a title race, which is why when Shamrock Rovers win these games, I think everyone outside of Rovers is like, no. There's nearly a, oh, we're going to be denied a title race. Bowls play them next Friday night. It is a huge, huge game. Wouldn't matter if Bowls were in mid-table and Rovers were cruising. It would still be a big game, but it's especially big in the race for the title. And not just between these two. It's big for Derry and maybe Dundalk as well. And Shelburne are beginning to kind of creep into that race for Europe. And if they can win tonight, as as we're speaking, that will uh, give them a big big boost. Um, Aoife Mullen of ExtraTime.com and, uh, of course, uh, Radio Falta of Belfast you'll occasionally hear you on uh, uh, Radio Nalifa as well thank you very much for joining us this is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast and that was ExtraTime.com's Aoife Mullen on Shamrock Rovers 1-0 win over Dundalk in Tala Stadium let's go from the top to the bottom and Drogheda's huge win over Cork City at Weavers Park of course when I say the bottom I don't mean Drogheda because they're now propelling themselves away from the relegation scrap former Drogheda player Paul Crowley was on co-commentary for LOI TV and LMFM and after the Drogs 3-1 win over City he sent us this voice note Game finished 3-1 on the night went in the way of Drogheda United and they pulled themselves well clear now of Cork City who was a must win game for them tonight Cork started much brighter and more the better side in the first half, setting up in a 1-4-3-3. They took the lead brilliantly from a set piece. Kusevich with the goal in 15 minutes with an excellent delivery and he attacked it superbly and stuck it into the top corner of the goal. Wogan had no chance. They started really well. They could have had a second down Cork City, maybe even possibly a third. Wogan spread himself really well from Rory Keaton and blocked them brilliantly in the, to stop them going 2-0 down. Something dropped the United powerful here all season. That When they do go a goal behind that, they keep themselves in the game. They did it again and they found themselves getting in at halftime. Just that 1-0. There would need to be a reaction from Drotten in the second half because they weren't just at it in the first half. And Cork City looked dominant and looked like they were going on to try and get the second goal, which ended up costing them in the end and not pushing on to get that second goal early in the first half with the other chances. The game turned down in 55 minutes where Dykesdale saw red for second yellow card, stupidly pushing and giving the referee the opportunity to give him a second yellow card. Not a lot in it for me. Um, I think he could have given him a warning, but it really did change the game. Drotted United then, up a gear. Who came to the rescue? The man who scored up in Kerry last week, it was Robinson. Connor Keeley knocked down from a set piece and he was at the back post, unmarked, and smashed it into the net. It just looked like it was going to be Drogheda United then, then that would turn the screw with Cork City down to 10 men. They struggled. But Rory Keaton had a great chance and he'd done really well on the edge of the box and he cut inside and he just curled one around Wogan and just hit off the inside of the post. That would have brought them back into the game. It was looking like then Drogheda were going to kick on. They got momentum back. Drogheda struggling, or Cork struggling down to 10 men. It was then that man, Aaron McAnally, who came from the bench. It was a great ball in from Ryan Brennan at the back post. He, he chested the ball down and absolutely smashed it into the goal. They went 2-1 up and deservedly so. Cork were looking like they were running out of steam. They flipped to a 4-4-1. They needed to because obviously they were a man down. They were trying to stay in the game. Still at 2-1, they felt they'd, they'd get a chance maybe to get back in and nip a vital point. But they were unable to. It was Drotted then who just 
dominated. Um, very soft penalty then awarded in the 90th minute for me. You may see it back, just a hand on the back of Adam Foley and the referee pointed a spot who was in a really good position. So up step Ryan Brennan in the 92nd minute and as he does, coolly just slotted the ball into the corner. That was Cortons then for Cork City. But two big changing points and, and two I feel the referee got wrong tonight was I think the, the second yellow card could have more warranted a, a chat um, which which changed the game for me and then a soft penalty which the game was probably over in the 92nd minute anyway but Cork City disappointed um, real them chances in the first half not to go 2-0 up and it, it really cost them then come final result so um, UCD come to drop the next week so drop will be looking next week to really punch a nail home in Cork City and, and pushing them down towards that playoff spot so finished here O'Shea and 3-1 draw the United this is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast and that was Paul Crowley, formerly of Drogheda and Shamrock Rovers, amongst others, on Drogheda's 3-1 win against Cork City at Weavers Park. What a big win that is for Drogheda, but no surprise, they've been playing well all season. Kevin Doherty has them well set up and it was a massive disappointment to City fans that he said no to Cork City. A worrying sign that he said no. I mean, in theory, the Cork City job should be one of the best in the league. It's a full-time club. It's a very well-supported club. I was about to say it's a big club, but how do you define a big club budget-wise? Can they match Shamrock Rovers? Can they match Derry? Can they match Bowes or even Dundalk? Probably not. So in that sense, they're not a big club. Now, it takes an awful lot to tempt someone to Cork, especially when they have a full-time job and they're involved in a good club and they have a family. And of course, Kevin has all of those things. And I imagine that's a challenge you'd face with with a good few people. But what Cork City have been doing over the last couple of weeks isn't working and they're going to have to make some change. I don't think there's a whole lot of blame to be pointed at Liam Buckley here. As pointed out actually by uh, the Irish Independence, Daniel MacDonald on the League of Ireland Central podcast, he's a caretaker. And generally speaking, people don't have goals at caretakers. And I don't think they should because I don't think the situation is his fault. Maybe Tim Clancy is someone they could bring in until at the end of the season at the very least just to fire them up, just to do something different. And Tim, although, you know, it didn't end well at St. Pat's, I still think he's a good manager, a good coach who who has a a lot to offer. And there are others as well. I'm just going with the obvious candidate there. Anyway, Cork City fans will agree that something needs to change. Something needs to be done. Let's run back through the results, just in case you haven't heard them. Of course, if you're a League of Ireland fan, you already know these, but uh, let's do it anyway. Uh, UCD nil, St. Pat's 1, Drogheda United 3, Cork City 1, Shamrock Rovers 1, Dundalk nil, Bohemians 2, Derry City 2. What does that do for the table? Well, let's have a look. Shamrock Rovers on top on 54 points. St. Pat's second on 50 points. Those two have played the same amount of games. They've both played 28 matches. Derry are third, but they have a game in hand on St. Pat's and Shamrock Rovers. They're on 47 points. Bohemians are fourth on 47 points. Dundalk 5th on 43 points. Shelburne 6th on 40 points. Drogheda United 7th on 32 points. Sligo Rovers 8th on 30 points. Cork City 2nd from bottom on 24 points. And UCD were well, their bottom on 10 points. So they appear to be gone. Big night for Sligo Rovers tonight who take on Shelburne. It's a big night for Shelburne as well because if they win, they're level on points with Dundalk and they're right back in that European race. So who knows what might happen. Uh, last night, that's Friday night in the First Division, Treaty United 3, Kerry FC 1, at Lone Town 0, Waterford, Wexford FC 2, uh, Bray Wanderers 0, Waterford FC 1, Galway United 4, Cove Ramblers 1, and Finn Harps 0, Longford Town 1. That's a big, big win for Longford. Let's have a look at the First Division table. Galway United, they're on their way back to the Premier Division. It'll be good to have them there as well, and we'll get a taste of what it'll be like uh, on the 15th of September when they host Dundalk, that's going to be a big game. And Galway really need to go for that, I think. Because it'd be good for them to beat a Premier Division, a Premier League, sorry, Premier Division, I was right the first time. It would be good for them, it would be good for them to beat a Premier Division team or two on their way back to the top table, just to prove they can do it. But as we saw when Waterford played Cork City last Monday, there is a big gulp. Now, Waterford just didn't have a good night and that can happen. And of course, Waterford and Cork City could well be meeting in the relegation playoff. Waterford have a bit to, bit of work to do before they get there, though. Right, they're not going to get the automatic promotion. That's going to be Galway. They're on 73 points after 28 games. Waterford have a game in hand. And if they win that, they'll narrow the gap to just 13 points. Uh, Cove Ramblers are third on 42 points. Athlone Town fourth on 40 points. And Wexford fifth on 38 points. That win for Longford 
keeps them in touch just about with the playoff spots. They're on 34 points. Treaty 7th on 33 points. Bray 8th on 32 points. Finn Harp 2nd from bottom on 29 points. And Kerry bottom on 7 points. For Finn Harps, I think people accept this was always going to be a building season. Bray probably will be disappointed to be 8th. Treaty United have overachieved over the last couple of years by getting to the playoffs. So for them to be in 7th, I don't think reflects poorly on Tommy Barrett. There's still games to be played, so maybe they can get into the conversation. Longford, 6th on 34 points. They're 4 points behind Wexford. Then at Lone, Cove Ramblers and Waterford. So at the moment, it's Waterford, Cove Ramblers, at Lone and Wexford. And it's a tough one to call because, look, Waterford are full-time and obviously they're well clear in 2nd position. But Cove Ramblers are capable of beating anyone on their day. Let's have a look at the fixtures today if you're listening on Saturday. In the Sports Direct Women's FAI Cup Treaty take on P-Mount. Terran Ure are up against their Cork City. DLR Waves welcome Wexford Youths. Shamrock Rovers take on Kilester Donny Carney and at Lone Town meet Galway United. That one's on at 7. The Rovers Kilester game is at uh, 5.30. Uh, the 4 o'clock game is DLR Waves against Wexford and the 2 o'clock Treaty United taking on P-Mount and Terran Ure up against Cork City. In the men's Premier Division, Sligo Rovers host Shelburne and as we mentioned that's a big game for Shelburne regards the European places because if they win then maybe just maybe they could spark something on Monday night there's a game in the first division Treaty United taking on Waterford that kicks off at 7.45 in the market fields uh, let's have a look towards next Friday because that's a big night in the Premier Division Cork City are up against Sligo Rovers should Rovers lose tonight then they might start kind of nervously looking behind them to see what Cork City are at at 7.45 in Oriel Park next uh, Friday night it's a big one Dundalk taking on Derry City it's must win for Dundalk regards Europe yes they're still in the cup but you don't want to have to rely on that Shelburne take on St. Pat's that one is on in Talca Park Drogheda United are up against UCD and Shamrock Rovers play Bohemians those games next Friday night uh, in the first division next Friday Kerry take on Bray Waterford are up against that loan Wexford take on Finn Harps and Cove Ramblers play Treaty United then next weekend the uh, SSE or Tricity Women's Premier Division is back Shelburne take on Athlone Bulls play Galway DLR Waves up against uh, PMED Cork City take on Shamrock Rovers and Sligo Rovers are up against Wexford in the first division on Saturday night Longford take on Galway United Longford if they can get a run together maybe just maybe could get into the playoff spots uh, that's almost it for the extratime.com League of Ireland voice notes podcast if you've listened to me talk straight now for what Nigh on three, four minutes, maybe even more. Fair play to you. Remember, uh, all the detail on all the games, including match previews and reports, that can be found on extratime.com. Uh, you can follow the Twitter account or the X account at Extra Time News. And of course, you can get me uh, via Twitter or X or whatever you're calling it at Oshin Langan. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.